Hello, you beautiful people. Happy Friday night. It's so good to be here with you. My name is Robert Love. I'm a neuroscientist. I specialize in helping people prevent Alzheimer's with science. And I'm so grateful that you chose to spend your Friday evening or some of your Friday evening here. So I'm a neuroscientist. I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not giving you medical advice. Please talk to your medical doctor before doing anything that affects your health. Tonight, I want to uh, not only spend some enjoyable time together and have some fun together, but also to answer your questions about Alzheimer's disease, about ADHD, about supplements, and any other questions you have that I, that I can be helpful with. My mission is to help share science that you can use to live a healthier life and reduce your risk of Alzheimer's disease and other chronic diseases. My intention is to live to be 130 years old in really good health, and then I'll reevaluate from there. And I think it's possible with a good diet, with regular exercise, with good sleep, with meaningful work, with good relationships, and the right supplements, and then taking care of our bodies, maybe doing hyperbaric oxygen therapy, doing helpful things like that. We can really make a difference in our lifespan and our health span. And so that's my intention to do those things. And I want to share that information with you so you are armed with the knowledge to do those things and improve the quality of your life, improve your health, and reduce your risk of Alzheimer's disease. So if you just joined, please uh, drop a note in the chat, say hi. Um, and then when you comment tonight, I'd love it if you would just use your first name or, um, or a name you'd like me to call you. Uh, it's sometimes difficult using your handle. And so um, if you comment or ask a question, please do. I, I'm here to answer your questions. Please uh, write the first name you, or the name you'd like to be called. So if you want to stay anonymous, make, make up a name if you like. But I want to be able to use your name so that way you know I'm, I'm, talk, I'm answering your question. And, uh, and that way I don't need to spend so much time trying to read the, uh, read the handles. So let me go through the question now. Carolyn says, hi, Robert. Hi, Carolyn. Great to see you. Welcome. Steven, good for the brain. Uh, I hope to share some things that are good for the brain. Snoozy, how long do you think it takes for vitamin B to take effect? Instantly, immediately. I feel the benefit of vitamin B when I take it. I feel an increase in energy and focus. Uh, JP here from Alberta, Canada. Hi, JP. Thank you so much for using your first name. Uh, please use your first name or name you'd like me to use when I talk to you because I want to answer your questions. Some comments were filtered out to protect the community experience. I wonder what's, uh, what's being said here. This is interesting. So my name is Robert Love. I'm a neuroscientist. I'm not a medical doctor. Please talk to your medical doctor before doing anything that affects your health. And I want to share with you the current science around things that affect your health, around Alzheimer's, around ADHD, and around brain health. And so I'd love to answer your questions. Uh, Kelly. Hi, Kelly. What is a good multivitamin? That's a great question. I used to take the multivitamin Smarty Pants, and now I'm opposed to multivitamins. Thorn has a high-quality multivitamin. I haven't looked at the back of it recently. The challenge with multivitamins, here's why you don't want to take a multivitamin. Generally speaking, it has too much copper and too much iron. Those are problems. Uh, too, much, too much copper competes with zinc, and um, too much copper is... And is is an oxidator. It's, it creates oxidative stress in the brain and can actually hurt uh, the integrity of your neurons. And so zinc helps protect your brain from too much copper. It helps protect your brain from oxidative stress and damage. Interestingly, multivitamins have oftentimes more copper than zinc as a, for the ratios that we need. And so that's a problem. And so I think multivitamins have too much copper not enough zinc. They also don't have enough magnesium. And the challenge with multivitamins is that people think that because they took a multivitamin, they're set, but most multivitamins don't have enough magnesium. So I think that's a problem. Also, most multivitamins have too much iron. Why is iron a problem? Well, according to Bill Bryson, who wrote the great book, The Body, I've mentioned The Body a couple times. It's a terrific read. Most, uh, if too much iron basically rusts us from the inside. You don't want too much iron. Dr. David Sinclair from Harvard talks about the problems with too much iron. So I don't like multivitamins for that reason. If multivitamins had more magnesium, less iron, less copper, I'd be more open to them. Cindy, hi, Cindy. Is magnesium citrate good? Um, great question. I think magnesium citrate is the magnesium that's in uh, Calm. That's a good magnesium, but it, it can upset the stomach. So you want to go um, slowly with that. I think the magnesium you want to avoid is magnesium oxide. Too much magnesium oxide, I believe, um, causes d diarrhea or disaster pants or upset stomach. Would someone look that up while we're here? Magnesium glycinate does not. I've taken high levels of magnesium glycinate. That's not a problem. I don't recommend necessarily taking the high levels, but I took 4X the regular dose of magnesium glycinate for days and no, no diarrhea problem. I think magnesium oxide is the one that promotes 
uh, diarrhea. Would someone check me on that while we're, while we're chatting here? Thank you for using your first name. If you ask a question, please use the first name so I can talk to you. I so appreciate that. I hate doctors, MTP. Um, I, I'm sorry. I hope you don't hate anybody. Um, I think that's really un- un- unfortunate. And I hope you find some, some good doctors. There are people who really care. Uh, Snoozy, thank you. You're welcome. Zuri, hello from New Jersey. Hi. Encourage more viewers to share. Oh, please, if, you, if this is helpful, please share this. A TikTok's telling me how to get this out to more people. Kathleen from Santa Barbara, curious how often you fast. Hi, Kathleen. So I fast three to four days a week doing intermittent fasting where I'll, I'll fast for 14 to 18 hours. It really depends upon how I'm feeling. So I'll stop eating around 8 p.m. I actually just finished eating right before we got on here today. And then uh, I'm, I'm gonna, a friend, I have a friend of mine coming over and he and I are going to talk. Uh, I'm moving soon and he and I are going to talk about this new community I want to help start up and, and some uh, things I want to bring to it. And uh, so I'm going to have some chocolate later on. So I'm going to stop eating around 9 and then I won't eat the next day until after 12. So 8, 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. would be 12 hours and add another 4. That's 16. So I like to fast 16 hours uh, three to four days a week. And my new thing that I'm working on is I want to fast for three to four days, uh, three to four days in a row, once a month. That triggers autophagy. When you go for food without three days, that triggers autophagy, which is self-eating of your, excuse me, of your mitochondria and of your cells, of your weak cells, your old cells, ideally your senescent cells. Senescent are your zombie cells that don't perform the function that they need to, but they create, they take resources and they um, create oxidative stress and inflammation. So we want to get rid of senescent cells. A great way to do that is fasting. So I plan on fasting more. The key thing with fasting, um, if you're interested in fasting, uh, the key thing is do what works for you. And ideally, this is a minimum 12 hours a day. That's not hard to go 12. It's go stop eating at 8 p.m. Don't eat until 8 a.m. I don't wake up until after 8 a.m., so that's not hard. So what you want to do is find a fasting schedule that works for you. Start with 12 hours and, and build from there. Do something that works. You don't want to fast every day. Take at least one day off a week. So that way um, we, want, we want our body to know that we're in a time of abundance. And I want to thank Dave Asprey for this. He's got a bunch of podcasts on this. So you can check out Dave Asprey. He talks about fasting a fair amount. You want to train your body to believe and understand that you are in a place of abundance. And the way to do this is not to fast all the time. Take at least one day off. But find something that works for you, Kathleen. Women generally um, fast less than men for whatever reason. I don't know why that is. There's a variety of reasons. So, And don't put too much stress on yourself. If you need to eat, please eat. Don't hurt yourself. And check with your medical doctor. I'm not giving you medical advice. Chiffon, nerve pain, cluster headache, ADHD. What can I do so I can help my body? So first, I would really recommend taking care of the basics. Get your morning sunshine, wake up, immediately go outside for 10 minutes, get some sunshine on your body uh, and, and in your eyes. Don't, don't wear sunglasses, but don't look at the sun. Just you know, walk around, get some sunlight, get good sleep, exercise 30 to 45 minutes a day, and do work that you love, and then get lots of hugs and get regular sleep. I would start there. I think that I think that's really important. And then uh, you might want to get checked by a functional medicine doctor to see if you have any vitamin deficiencies. Might be vitamin D, vit- might be vitamin B. Those are really easy to take. If you have ADHD, take B with fish oil. That's really good. You can, and then um, you know I I off I would get headaches from taking ADHD drugs. And so maybe uh, you know talk to your doctor see if it's appropriate to not take your take ADHD medication every day. Not giving you medical advice, but that's worth considering. Dog mom for life. My dad has dementia. I'm really sorry to hear that. I recommend the book. If anyone has uh, someone in your in your life in your that has dementia or early stage dementia, please, please, please get the book, The End of Alzheimer's Program by Dr. Dale Bredesen. Read the book. Use the book. A lot of the things I share with you are things that I learned from the book or things that sparked ideas from the book. And then I, I went deeper into them. It's a great resource. It's a great thing to follow. Um, and then I'll talk about some things we can do at the end that might be helpful as well. Okay, there's 350 of us on here today. I just wanted to take a moment. There's some people going through some difficult times here in the United States from the hurricane uh, in Florida and, and, and North Carolina and that area. So I'd just like to take just, just a moment of, of silent prayer. Let's send our brothers and sisters in those areas love. We ask for safety for those people there and, uh, and grace and ease getting through this difficult time. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Okay. Katie, do you recommend liquid vitamins over pill form? Uh, oftentimes, yes. 
It really depends upon the quality. So generally speaking, you want to avoid the pressed pills, which are kind of like hard. Think Centrum, uh, not to disparage Centrum directly, but a lot of these old pills are like, like they're hard. You want capsules. Liquid is often better if it's a good company. Um, Creations Way is a company that I've done work with. Um, so I do have a relationship with that company. I think they do really good work. Laura. Hi, Laura. Hi, do you give links or list specific brands of things you take? I sometimes do. It's really interesting. I, and I, you know, this is more my challenge than, than yours. I'll, I'll, I'll give a link and then people will call me a snake oil salesman. I'm not, try, I'm not trying to sell snake oil. I'm trying to give you information and people ask me where to buy the stuff. And then I feel compelled to tell you. I also don't want to share that because I don't want the information I share to be tainted with. I'm trying to sell you stuff. I sometimes am trying to sell you stuff and I try to be really clear when I am. Like I'm trying to give you the masterclass on how to prevent Alzheimer's that's below my profile. That's a gift and then you can get more free stuff from there. Um, I'm, try I'm trying to, to give you stuff there. Um, so I'm a little reluctant to give links generally speaking. Um, I, the brands that I do like that I've shared are Thorn and uh, Garden of Life. I don't have relationships with those companies. Yet, I'll likely have a deal with Thorn soon, I'm guessing, because people really like to buy their stuff when I mention it. Uh, another great company is Creations Way. I do have a relationship with that company. I've bought from them in the, them in the past. I know the president of the company, and I think they do good work. Steve, can brain tumor cause stomach problems? That's a really interesting question. I don't know. My guess is if you have a problem, in, well, if you have a problem in your gut, that does cause brain problems. So if you have brain problems, does that pro cause a problem with your gut? Probably. I don't know, though. That's a really interesting question, Steve. Allie. Allie from Boston. Hi, Allie from Boston. Heard about today's FDA news controlling supplement manufacturing. Yeah, I heard about that. I don't think it's going to happen. I've heard, I remember this happening 10 years ago. Um, there's going to be such an uproar about that. The FDA is so broken. Can I, can I rant for a moment just about how bad the FDA is? So the FDA is designed, theoretically, to protect consumers and, make, and have us be healthy. And so there's a... Um, so Coca-Cola is an American company that sells sugar water. And uh, the, co the country of Mexico, they're more effective at protecting their people than the United States. I, had, I, just, I saw a Coca-Cola from Mexico and a Coca-Cola made in the United States. Guess, guess which one was healthier? The one from Mexico. The one from Mexico had, had cane sugar in it. The one from the U.S. had high fructose corn syrup, which is terrible for you. It's related to inflammation. It's related to diabetes. Di diabetes. It's related to all kinds of chronic disease. It's so bad for you. And, and yet our FDA allows Coca-Cola to use unhealthy ingredients. And then in Europe, it's healthier for you. It's also smaller bottles too. So our FDA is broken and corrupt and incompetent. And, um, and so I, don't, I, don't, I pray that doesn't happen. I don't think it's going to happen. And um, so yeah. That's, that's my thought on that. Sharona Fleming. Hi, my ears hurt so much when I tried the hyperbaric oxygen chamber, I couldn't adjust. Should I see a doctor? That's a really great question. Uh, did you talk to the people at the hyperbaric oxygen therapy session? First of all, congratulations on taking initiative and getting a hyperbaric oxygen therapy session. Those are shown to help reduce inflammation, increase recovery, uh, uh, increase like wound healing or healing. They're great for anti-aging or longevity good for brain function, all kinds of benefits. So one, I wonder what pressure you were at and if that was appropriate. Two, I wonder if the machine, if, if everything was hooked up correctly. And so I don't know if you should see a doctor about that. Um, if you think you should, I support your decision. See a competent medical professional and ask the people at the, at the, at the chamber. So we want in general 1.5 to 2 atmospheres. I don't think you were above that, but maybe uh, you wanted to start earlier. I'm sorry you had a difficult time, but um, check out and see... Uh, yeah, see if something see if th something's up. My guess is your medical doctor won't be able to do many tests to see to see that. Um, but I don't know though. Uh, more so, what do you think about apricot supplements? I don't know. I haven't I haven't heard of them. I haven't seen any research on them. Oh, so I, yesterday I got a couple of questions about black seed oil. So I said I would do some research. Here's what I got. So black seed oil is really really cool. It goes back to ancient Egypt in the times of Tutankhamun. So Tutankhamun is the um, the only reason Tutankhamun is famous is because that was the, the most intact tomb we found. It was undisturbed. Back, uh, back in the day, the, um, who was this? The, this is the priest. The Egyptian priests basically raided the tombs of the kings or the old pharaohs for a, quote, refurbishing. This is government doublespeak. If you've read 19, 
is it 84? 1984, doublespeak is basically a government saying we want peace and then starting war. So the priests are saying we need to refurbish the tombs, which is basically them going in and taking all the gold and taking the riches. So stealing from the tombs. They did this for all the famous tombs. This is why a lot of the, the fancy things that, were, that pharaohs were buried with are gone. Tutankhamun was such an insignificant pharaoh. He was just a young kid buried in a, in a small tomb. And so no one thought to raid it. They forgot about it. It was found by accident when people were playing football out there. Uh, football, I think they're, I don't know if they're throwing a football or kicking a soccer ball. So they find this tomb. It's completely intact because everyone forgot about it. In Tutankhamun's tomb was uh, black seeds. So it's theorized that black seeds have been used since ancient Egyptian times for health reasons. Pretty cool, right? So here are the benefits of black seeds. First, they're good for diabetes. Second, they're good for uh, anti-inflammation. And then third, they're neuroprotective. Fourth, they've shown some benefit for, for anti-cancer, which is really interesting. Um, and there's some specific pathways they work on that show that they are, they're helpful with anti-cancer. I think the biggest benefit for the brain is the anti-inflammation. I, I looked at a review of, or a meta-analysis of studies excuse me, I had salad for dinner. Um, so a meta-analysis of studies is where you look at the data from multiple studies, and then they, they use all that data and do another analysis. This meta-analysis found that black seed oil, I think they looked at 10 different studies. So this meta-analysis of 10 studies found that black seed oil is associated with a decrease in inflammation, specifically in, um, was it tumor necrosis factor alpha and C-reactive protein. Those are two big um, in inflammatory markers. If you wanna sound smart when you visit your medical doctor, you know, ask what, my, what are my inflammation levels? What's my CRP, my C-reactive protein? What's my TNF alpha? What's my tumor necrosis, al tumor necrosis factor alpha? Another one is IL-6, which is interleukin-6, which this did not study. And then they looked at something called MDA, which if I remember correctly is Malone dial dihyde. Malone dial dihyde. MDA is a marker of oxidative stress. And so your body produces it when a lot of oxidation is, is going on. And so it lowered that, which is cool. So black seed oil has, has these anti-inflammatory pro-oxidant -ox, pro or um, anti-inflammatory antioxidant benefits. So good stuff there. Uh, it's neuroprotective. I haven't seen specific stuff on memory. So I don't know if black seed oil is associated with memory or not, but that's the research on that. It's cool. It's been used for a really long time. I really like these anti-inflammatory natural supplements. Curcumin is one of my favorite. A cinnamon, salon cinnamon. You want to get organic salon cinnamon spelled C-E-Y-L-O-N. Those are really, really good. And then now black seed oil might be one of them. It, this is, the research on this is kind of new. It's just coming out, but this meta-analysis is pretty promising. So my guess is this is very, very safe. I don't know the dosage. This is likely very safe. And this is probably something you may not feel right away, but it's something you want to take over a long period of time. Just like you eat a salad tonight, you might feel okay. Um, but if you eat a salad every night, assuming it's a healthy organic salad with lots of good stuff in it, over time, this will create a status of good health. And so this might be a long-term supplement. I'm excited about what, what I read about it. So that's black seed oil. You were also asking about sea moss. Do you remember asking about sea moss? So sea moss is actually something that I've been taking. It's, it, the, the supplement is called Hooperzine A, spelled H-U-P-E-R-Z-I-N-E. Huperzine A, H-U-P-E-R-Z-I-N-E-A. Huperzine A is actually one of my, the first supplements I overdosed on. This was Halloween, let me go into a short story. This was Halloween, it might have been four years ago when I was getting into nootropics. And nootropics are supplements that enhance brain function. And I, I, I measured out how much I was supposed to take. So I got the powder, I got the, because I wanted to met, know exactly how much I was taking of all these different supplements of aniracetam, L-tyrosine and so forth. And so I got my little scale, I was measuring and I took it and I felt kind of activated for an hour. And then I had a really bad headache. And then I had this terrible stomach ache. I looked back on how much I took. I took 10 times the amount I thought I was taking. I was off by 10X. Imagine taking 10X the amount of anything you're meant to take. Imagine 10X Tylenol. So if you meant to take two Tylenol, you take 20, that can cause liver problems. 10X Advil probably cause stomach problems. 10X alcohol, you might be dead. 20 shots instead of two shots could, could kill a person, could create alcohol poisoning. So um, I had a terrible headache and a really bad stomach ache for the day. And I was supposed to go out with friends and I had to call them and cancel. I just felt really miserable. Um, I actually remember the day really well. I remember I was watching self-development programs, trying to learn something that day. But that's how safe this supplement is. I was off by 10, a factor of 10 and I was okay, no long-term damage that I'm aware of. I, and I also, and now I get it in the pill form rather than the powder because I don't want to miss again. But um, so Hooper's A is very, very safe. It's well-studied. It's been studied a lot in China. And the, the, the recent review I read is that the research from China uh, 
the studies aren't long enough and the side effects aren't reported well. And so I want to do a study. I'm actually uh, starting a study right now on Huprazine A and to look at side effects, which I'm guessing are going to be minimal, but who knows, and looking at how much it improves memory and over what time frame. And so if you'd like to be in a Huprazine A study, there's information below my profile. It says new study. What, what I'm doing is um, a lot of these studies, so, so Big Pharma won't fund this study because Huprazine A, you can't patent it. So that means the research needs to be done another way. And so instead of applying for government grants, I'm asking you if you want to participate, if you will help fund this. And so the cost of participating is only $500. That includes a six-month supply of the study supplement and, uh, and memory tests over that time. And uh, so we can measure the, the impact of Huprazine A over time. And so if you'd like to participate, uh, please go there. So that's a study on CMOS or Huprazine A that I am starting and I'm really excited about. And so if that sounds cool, please, please check that out. Uh, and then generally speaking, I think Huprazine A is a very, very safe, very effective, very powerful supplement. Do not take Huprazine A with aniracetam. The reason why is Huprazine A increases the amount of acetylcholine in the synapse. It basically blocks the reuptake. This, when I first heard about this, this scared me. I was like, ooh, I don't want to block the reuptake. And then I looked at the data. Huprazine A is super safe. It, uh, it not only slows down the progression of dementia, it actually improves memory in those with early stage dementia. It also, it's also neuroprotective. That means it protects the brain from inflammation and oxidative stress and damage. It's great. So it's really great for the brain, generally speaking. Um, aniracetam increases acetylcholine. If you take a, something that blocks the reuptake of acetylcholine and increases acetylcholine, so imagine dumping more acetylcholine in the synapse and preventing it from being cleared away, Doing those two together might be too much, so you don't want to do that. So don't pair, um, don't pair Huprazine A with aniracetam or oxyracetam or any of the other racetams. That could be too much. Okay, so that's my little diatribe there. Hope that's helpful. Um, hi, handsome. Thank you, Desert Flower. How are you? Uh, Sammy, oh, when you comment, would you please put your first names in the comments or questions? I'd like to refer to you by your first name. If you don't want to use your first name, you know, pick a name from a movie that you like. Oh, who saw the, the post? I made a post about coffee today, some, uh, about milk and never to use milk. And someone wrote the funniest comment. They said, no, 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 Lloyd. We're going to keep adding milk to our coffee and keep saving our money for the worm store. This is a quote from Dumb and Dumber. It was so darn funny. I, I, I thought that was hilarious. So choose a character from Dumb and Dumber, your favorite movie, if you don't want to use your real name. But I'd like to refer to you by, your, by first name so that way, I can, uh, that way you know I'm answering your question. Um, what's, uh, Sammy, what supplements do I think to help for joints? I like curcumin a lot. Curcumin's anti-inflammatory, and that's great for your joints and your bone. And joint, that's good for your joints. It's good for your brain. It's good for your organs. I also like cinnamon, salon cinnamon for that. I think that's really good. B-complex, okay? Yes, Robin, B-complex are great. Thorn makes a good B complex. Garden of Life makes a good B complex. B complex is better than um, traditional, uh, than just B6 or B12 because you want all the B vitamins and you run the risk of being short on them if you don't take the whole B complex. Also pair that with fish oil. Research from David Smith from Oxford finds that you pair fish oil with a B vitamin that reduces the risk of Alzheimer's disease by 30%. Really great research from Dr. David Smith. I wonder if Roxy's going to be back. Y'all remember Roxy from yesterday? If you've been here multiple days and you've seen Roxy or some of the other um, disgruntled people, would you put something in the chat? I think that's re it's really interesting that they'll, they'll be opposed to what I'm doing here or what we're doing, sharing health information so we can um, live happier, healthier lives. With the disclaimer, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not giving you medical advice. And these people are upset. I, th I think that's fascinating. I wonder if she'll be back. Or uh, Kurt, was it Kurt? Maybe he'll be back. Um, Phyllis or Phil, my sweet mama died of Alzheimer's disease. Very, very sorry to hear that. I know it's very difficult. I hope the information here and the information in Dr. Dale Bredesen's book is helpful to you. Tila Taquitos, are you single? Yes, I am. Eden Noel, how do you balance copper, zinc, and iron? Great question. Uh, I do it by not taking a multivitamin and taking a zinc, taking a zinc supplement. What type of magnesium should people take? and the milligrams. So uh, follow the directions on the bottle. I take magnesium multiple ways. This is just what I do. I don't know what's right for you. I would say check with your medical doctor. Make sure they test the magnesium inside your blood cells, not just, um, 
inside, not just your, your plasma magnesium. Your body regulates your plasma magnesium, which is the magnesium inside your blood, very strictly. It's the magnesium inside your cells that you want. So I was talking with this medical doctor and I said, how often do you see a magnesium deficiency? She said, never. I said, never? She said, I've never seen anyone be deficient in magnesium. Well, that's because they're measuring it the wrong way. They were measuring just the serum magnesium. That basically doesn't change. Your body regulates that very tightly. What you want to look at is the mag- amount of magnesium in cells. And so there's a reason she wasn't seeing it and other doctors aren't finding it. Don't not necessarily, not necessarily to pick on this person, but generally speaking, doctors are measuring this the wrong way. Make sure they're measuring it inside the cells. So I take magnesium a couple of different ways. Magnesium glycinate when I wake up, I take, uh, I'll put magnesium in my water, the trace minerals magnesium. I'll put calm in my smoothie and then I'll take some magnesium chelate before I go to bed. I might be overdoing it, I don't know. Oh, and also use that magnesium, um, that magnesium cream, that Val cream, I'll use that uh, before sleep and that really helps me. Anthony, what about krill oil? Krill oil is great, I love it. Creatine, Dr. Love. Yeah, creatine rocks. Love creatine, creatine improves brain function. Make sure you're drinking enough water. Um, Creatine's great. Creatine's shown to not only be good for building muscle, but also for energy. What creatine does is it basically donates a phosphate for ATP. So this is, if you want to impress someone, ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. It's the primary energy source used throughout our body, excuse me, and our brain. Creatine, uh, adenosine monophosphate, I think that's what it is, uh, it, it basically donates a phosphate ion. It donates phosphate, a phosphate, um, excuse me, a phosphate molecule, not ion. It takes that phosphate so that way you can make more ATP. So turn ADP, adenosine diphosphate, into adenosine um, triphosphate. So basically it donates a, donates a phosphate to make, ener- to make ATP, which makes more energy. So that's what creatine does. Uh, make sure you're drinking enough water. Check with your medical doctor, especially if you have kidney issues. Sabrina, oh yes, Roxy, yes. Let's send Roxy some love. Clearly some, there's something upsetting her because why would you stay on my channel where we're having fun together and sharing health information and then be upset. Like, go do something else. There's so many great things you can do. So many great books, movies, music. What do you think I should do with a degree in psychology? Uh, great question, Sam. Let, let me give that some, some thought here for just a moment. What, what, well, what's your interest in psychology and find out how you can help the most people. So my interest in psychology went from social psychology. I was really interested in why people do what they do to, um, I was re- and also in college, I was really interested in physiological psychology. This is kind of like neuroscience. This is you know, how do drugs affect the brain? I thought drugs were so interesting. I still do. So how do drugs affect the brain? I really like that. And then, um, and then I got into ADHD. Monique, please stop asking to join me. Um, I'm going to decline you for now, but thank you for asking. Uh, so I got into that. ADHD. And then three years ago, I switched my focus to Alzheimer's disease and longevity because I got concerned about my parents. So I think the important thing, Sam, is that you, one, are interested in what you do. I think this is really important. Who here agrees with me? Like you, Life is so beautiful. We live in such a great, oppor- great time with so much technology, so much information, so much opportunity. Do something you love that's important to you. Second of all, find a way to help people. And so whatever you're doing, it, it, it fascinates me. Uh, I'm looking at... Um, I'm just reading what some professors are up to and they're doing research that sounds to me so boring. They're looking at like the specific part of the brain and just this, this tiny group of neurons and what happens in mice. I'm thinking, how are you not researching Alzheimer's disease? This is so interesting and this affects so many people. Like, why aren't you doing things that are more important? But they're doing things that they think are interesting, which, which is important. So do something that's interesting to you that, is, that can help a lot of people. Um, Cindy Gonzalez, what do you think of mushrooms? Mushrooms are amazing. I learned this from uh, Dr. Stephen Gundry on one of his podcasts. There's a research from Asia, I think it's from Singapore, that found that two cups of mushrooms per week reduces the risk of Alzheimer's disease up to 70%. I get so excited, I say Alzheimer's disease. Reduce the risk of Alzheimer's disease by 70%. Huge. Um, So mushrooms are just terrific. And there's research from Johns Hopkins and other universities that find that psychedelic mushrooms are great for smoking cessation. One of the best things you can do for your brain is to stop smoking. Nicotine's good. Nicotine lozenges are good. Smoking bad. Please do not smoke. Please give up smoking. It's just not worth it. Drinking also not good. Um, So that's what I have to say about that. Uh, thoughts on Max Lugavir. Hi, Robert. Yeah, I love Max Lugavir. I actually got to interview him a couple years ago for Virtual Burning Man. I think he's a good person. I think he's really smart. I like his channel. I learned from him. I think he's great. 
Um, is cilantro good for your brain? Great question, Ella. Uh, so cilantro is, um, one great thing about cilantro is that it binds to heavy metals. So if you take um, chlorella, which causes the release of heavy metals, and then cilantro, that binds to the heavy metals, then you can poop them out. So cilantro, great for heavy metal detox. Um, and then the medical medium has a great, um, has a great smoothie recipe, medical medium. I learned about him from Tony Robbins. Blue Power, appreciate it, Dr. Love. You're so welcome. Aaron, what do you think about astaxanthin? I believe astaxanthin, if I'm remembering this correctly, is good for the eyes. I think that's one of the, one of the components in some eye um, supplements. I think, I think it's good. I don't know if it has benefits for the brain, but what's good for the eyes is probably good for the brain. By the way, loss of hearing it increases the risk of Alzheimer's disease. Why? Because we feel old. We can't hear things and our world shrinks. So la la loss of hearing is a shrinking world. You don't want that. Um, also fear is a shrinking world. Depression is a shrinking world. You want an expansive world. So um, work on protecting your hearing. When I go to concerts, I wear hearing aids. Please wear hearing, uh, not hearing aids, earplugs. So please protect your hearing, protect your eyesight. These are really, really important. Uh, Robin, vegan omegas. Yeah, for vegan omegas, uh, choose uh, maybe algae oil. There's also hemp seed oil. Those are probably two of the best. Flaxseed oil is less good than fish oil, but you can, if you eat a lot of it, uh, flaxseed oil, or um, there's another one that's high in ALAs. But yes, there are, there are vegan omega-3s. Stacy, do you have a list of all these things written down? I don't. People keep asking me for it, and I, I'm, I'm trying to release these list of supplements in a way that's digestible. If I were just to download my whole day on you, it's a little bit overwhelming. I've built this over, boy, how long have I been working on this? 15 years? Uh, on my health practices. And so if I just give it to you all at once, it's just going to be too much. And you'd be like, I'm not doing that. And I understand some days I don't want to do it. Um, and I don't do everything every day. And so I'm trying to give you the most important things and, and give them in bite-sized chunks to where it's, it's valuable for you. I'll give you the broad strokes. Okay. The broad strokes are I stop eating 8 PM and I eat a really healthy dinner, usually of sardines or um, another fatty fish and a salad generally speaking. And then I'll have some chocolate for desserts and I'll stop eating ideally around eight. I won't drink alcohol or other things. I'll try to get to bed between, uh, you, ideally at 11. It's been later. It's been around 12 recently. And then I'll sleep eight hours. I'll take some supplements before bed. I take melatonin because I, it's, I, I believe it's safe for adults. Check with your medical doctor. Don't give it to children. It's not safe for children. We, we, we don't know what impact it's having. Um, and then I'll sleep in a dark room with an eye mask, sometimes earplugs and a noisemaker, sometimes a weighted blanket. And I prioritize my sleep and I'll say no to social invites for, for my sleep. And then I'll, I'll wake up, I'll drink celery juice. I'll go for a walk outside. From there, um, I'll then take a cold shower, do some Wim Hof breathing, and then maybe I'll drink some water and do some work. I might have coffee around 12 or matcha around 12 with some MCT oil. Um, if I'm not fasting that day, I might add collagen powder. If I am fasting that day, I won't add collagen powder. So I'm still in a fasted state. And then I'll eat my first meal will likely be a smoothie. My smoothie, I've, I've shared videos on my smoothie. It's uh, blueberries, organic blueberries, organic broccoli, um, and then some fresh vegetables and some green powders like chlor chlorella, spirulina, add some fat. Monique, you keep asking me to join. What's going on? Um, not, not tonight, but thank you. Thank you for asking. All right, um, so that's, it. that's what's in my smoothie. And then um, I'll exercise around three to four. For, and I'll do exercise of convenience. If I'm at a place with a swimming pool, I'll swim. If I'm at a place with a trampoline, I'll jump on a trampoline. If it's a nice day, I'll walk outside. If it's bad outside, I'll stay inside and do sit-ups and push-ups and jog in place. And, uh, or I'll do a rowing machine. And then, uh, and then I'll have some food after, I'll just have some water, some food after dinner. And then I'll, or after exercise, then I'll have, have dinner. And, um, you know, there's some morning supplements in there. So that's generally my day. I think what's most important is the exercise, the sleep, and the, um, the healthy meals, and the, the getting sunlight in my eyes. I think those are foundational. The supplements are good. Those are not a substitute. Supplements are not a substitute for sleep, for exercise, or for good food. So that's, that's my best stuff for you. I really recommend doing that before uh, investing a lot in supplements. Supplements are a great shortcut to really powerful things for your health, for your brain, all kinds of great stuff. I love supplements. And if you're not doing your exercise, if you're not sleeping well, if you're not eating well, the supplements aren't going to be as valuable as they could. 
All right, Alex, is drinking beet juice every day bad for you? I don't know. I don't think so. Um, beet juice is definitely not ketogenic friendly, um, but beet juice has some great things for it. Beet juice is great for um, nitric oxide. Nitric oxide uh, helps dilate the blood vessels and that helps reduce blood pressure. Really, really good. Um, interestingly, Viagra kind of works on the nitric oxide pathway and improves blood flow. Heavy cream and coffee. Um, heavy cream and coffee versus no coffee. Uh, I don't know if I like that, uh, those options. Surely you could have coffee without heavy cream. Try MCT oil or coconut oil, blend that up. It's more fatty than heavy cream. Um, I, I don't, heavy cream for me is sits really hard in my stomach, really heavy in my stomach and I don't feel good. Um, I think, and dairy is inflammatory. At least it feels inflammatory for me. Um, I, I think heavy cream is, is too expensive to, uh, to use on a regular basis. Also really rich in calories. A lot of Americans are overweight or obese. I don't think heavy cream is worth the trade-off. Uh, you can use MCT oil and coconut oil and ghee. Blend that up in your coffee. It's so good. Um, so that's my thought. Also, try adding uh, just collagen, that, that vital proteins collagen. I, the, the chocolate stuff, it's delicious. Uh, Rossman, 87. What are your thoughts on aspartame? It's terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. It's dangerous. It's poison. It's the FDA failed us. If you want to get scared... Uh, search Donald Rumsfeld and aspartame on YouTube and watch a documentary on aspartame. It's terrifying. I got, I got into aspartame 10 years ago. It's really, Monique, why do you keep asking to join? I don't understand why you're doing this. Please, please stop this. It's distracting. And thank you for being here. Uh, Cappy son, I was on the Roxy live. Yeah. Wasn't that interesting? I, I, I wish her well. I hope she comes back and says, Hey, I'm sorry. I don't know what was going on with me that day. I appreciate the information. The professor, is EPA or DHA fish oil better than standard oil? I don't know what standard oil is. Um, EPA and DHA are omega-3 fatty acids. You want about 1,000 milligrams of each a day to help reduce the risk of depression and improve brain health. Um, so you want to make sure your fish oil has those. If it doesn't list those, get a better fish oil. Can't, can I read SSRI medication? Can't stop. Read up on it. Um, oh, that's, that's, a, that's a note to somebody else. Love lavender. Thorn isn't the great though. Looked it up. Not completely active forms. Um, okay. Thank you. Blue power Hashimoto disease supplements. Yeah. So Hashimoto's disease is basically a thyroid condition. It's hypothyroidism, if I understand, which means an underactive thyroid. One of my dear friends from Austin, Texas, Dr. Laura Presley. By the way, I'm wearing my Longhorns t-shirt. Go, go Texas. Hook them. We got a game tomorrow. Um, so Hashimoto's disease, hypothyroidism, uh, fluoride in your, in your food and in your water and in your packaged beverages is often a contributor to Hashimoto's disease. I remember my friend, Dr. Laura Presley, she ran for Austin City Council a number of years ago. She's a chemist. And she reported that she removed fluoride from her diet and her Hashimoto's got better without medication. She told her doctor this and they said, oh yeah, that happened. Well, she said, well, why didn't you tell me? And he said, well, most people won't do it. And she said, well, it would be nice if I had the option. So if you have a thyroid issue, if it's hypothyroidism, there might be an issue of too much fluoride in, in, your, um, in your diet from either tap water or eating processed, food, eating processed food that was raised with fluoridated water or drinking packaged coffees and teas and uh, sodas and so forth. So I would recommend tracking down the fluoride in, in your life and seeing if that's that's going on. Um, and I think, oh, uh, another supplement is L-tyrosine. So if you want to, uh, for thyroid hormone, you can make, uh, take L-tyrosine with some iodine and some selenium. Those are some precursors to thyroid hormone. Check with your medical doctor, make sure that is safe for you. You might already be on iodine. So watch out for that. Uh, Barbara, hi, Barbara. I've heard Alzheimer's is linked to high levels of blood sugar. Thoughts? Yes, you are correct. Uh, type 2 diabetes is one of the strongest risk factors for Alzheimer's disease. That's very correct. And it fascinates me. People are like, you can't, you can't prevent Alzheimer's. Nothing causes Alzheimer's. It's all genetic. Well, what about the strong data to show that if you have type 2 diabetes, your risk of Alzheimer's skyrockets? What about that? Is it, I mean, that, clearly that's associated with Alzheimer's disease. The proof's in the pudding. The data is very clear. I don't know how people ignore that and say it's all genetic. It's really fascinating. And medical doctors will say that. I'll say, what about that? And then they'll just shrug their shoulders and leave the room. It's really interesting. Hi, Nikki. So happy to see you live. Great. Thank you for being here. You're such an inspiration to me. Well, thank you for saying that. Please, please share what you learn with your family and friends. Then you can inspire yourself. I just lost my, my spot. Your baby mama. Thank you for the info. You're so welcome. Uh, alter ego. Uh, what level of fish 
oil would you recommend? 1,000 milligrams of EPA and DHA. Collect your dead. What supplements do you recommend for gut inflammation? I recommend stop eating foods that cause inflammation. Stop eating uh, processed sugar. Uh, stop eating packaged foods. Stop eating um, what other foods cause inflammation. Uh, bad fats, omega-6 fats. So stop eating that. Eat more, more fibrous foods. Eat more organic fruits, organic vegetables. Um, if you're going to eat protein, eat smash fish, sardines, mackerel, anchovies, uh, salmon, wild-caught salmon, and herring, and, or grass-fed beef or lamb or pastured chicken. So cleaning up your diet will do a great thing for inflammation, for gut inflammation specifically. Overall for inflammation, uh, curcumin and, uh, and now black seed oil and salon cinnamon are great. Where do you recommend to get aniracetam? Uh, you got you to search for that yourself. Aniracetam is one of those treasures you got to find. Yesterday, someone who was on yesterday and saw the person who said, I've been taking aniracetam and I love it. That was really, really cool. So you got you to you earn your aniracetam. You got to find it yourself and then buy some and, and try it out. Don't take aniracetam if you're in warfarin. That is counterindicated. Other than that, it's very safe. Uh, from M. Solis, a Berkey water system will remove heavy metals and fluoride from the water. Yes, I love Berkey. Is there anything you'd recommend to someone with... L. Herd, Danlos, and ADHD. I don't know what that is. I know what ADHD is. I have that. Um, it depends on how old you are and what your challenges are. I'd recommend exercise, number one. Sleep, number two. Uh, number three, getting up and moving your body every hour. My goodness, I don't know why we ask kids to sit still all day. That is just silly. Does anyone else find that silly? My goodness. Okay, we are running out of time here. There is fluoride in coffee. Yes, Chrissy girl. Uh, that's definitely true of packaged coffee. I don't know if that's true of coffee made at home. But that that could be that could be true. From Boy Mom, Roxy, he never claimed to be qualified. He already said, consult with your medical doctor. Thank you, Boy Mom. That's exactly what I said. Is Roxy here? Um, speed up. Uh, speed up. Oh, oh, your name is Speed Up. When is collagen good for you? Uh, collagen is good for most humans. A lot of us could use collagen. It's a form of protein. Uh, it's good for your hair, skin, nails, joints, just good stuff. Uh, I like that brand, Vital Proteins. I think I made a video on what I add to my coffee. It's in there. Oh, I had a question for you. I had some questions for you. Um, so first of all, I'd love it if you would take, take a moment and write down what you learned today and what actions you're going to take based upon that. I'd love to see that. Um, milk thistle. Yes, milk thistle is good for the, for the um, liver. Uh, I don't think you want to take it all the time. It basically stops. I think it stops the liver from processing some things. So it it's really kind on your liver enzymes, but it's not good to take long-term. Check me on that. I'm not an expert on milk thistle and its impact on the liver, but do some, do some searching on what's safe. What's the max sugar intake per day? Really good question. Um, you, know, you know, the federal government doesn't have a max sugar intake on our... Um, on our packaged food, if you look at, a, look at a candy bar, it'll say, you know, 20 grams of sugar, but it doesn't say what percentage. And so I, I, I don't know. I, I just generally don't eat grains. I don't eat refined sugar. And I eat lots of fruits and vegetables and more vegetables and fruits. Tuna for the brain. Uh, tuna can have more mercury in it than you want. So I like smash fish, salmon, mackerel, anchovies, sardines, and herring. Uh, is the pill fish oil worse than the liquid kind? I like the liquid kind. I think it tastes good. Bone broth full of collagen. Yes, it is. Okay, what are people doing? Um, no more multivitamins. Excellent, excellent, Robin. What else? Stacy, I'm buying salon cinnamon. Excellent. Ellen Bravo, definitely more fasting. Great. Make sure that you, um, you know, don't be too hard on yourself. Sometimes, just like exercise, you know, who started exercise program for New Year's and then you wake up at 6 a.m. and you run, like you try to run five miles and you run like two or you know you get half a mile in, you're like screw this, and you stop. So don't do that with fasting. Find something that works and just keep at it. This is a lifelong process. By the way, all the things we're talking about today, I don't want this to be short lived. I want you to do these healthy practices every day for the rest of your life as long as you want to be healthy. That's the key. Okay. So take curcumin pretty much every day for as long as you want to be healthy. Take a couple days off here and there for cycling. Get your exercise every day. Get your sleep every day. These things are, are a lifestyle, and if you want to live a long, healthy life, adopt them now. No more fluoride. Great job, Blue Power. Okay, more are coming in. Soldier Boy, is there anything to help anxiety and depression? Yes, I recommend exercise for nootropics. Um, no, those, could inc those might increase anxiety. Oh, for nootropics for depression, anorastam is good. 
alter ego, I'd love to fund you because you're helping so many people. Why, thank you so much. There will be opportunities for that. Number one is the study that we're doing on Hooper's Ine. Number two, I'm going to start a Patreon soon where uh, subscribers like you can, can just contribute monthly and that will help fund what I'm doing. So thank you so much. Um, I took fish oil with B-Complex. Awesome. Great job, Sally. No toothpaste, oil pulling now. I don't recommend that. I don't recommend not brushing. Oil pulling's great. Um, all right, thank you for sharing your knowledge. You're so welcome. So I have a question for you. Um, for those of you who are adopting more, Caitlin, no, no, no multivitamins. Excellent job. Lion's May is amazing for depression. Oh, I didn't know that. Excellent. Thank you, Black Widow. Um, so for those of you who are making um, good choices in your life and changing kind of how you're eating, how you're exercising, your supplement regimen, if you'd be interested in any sort of coaching, just, uh, just drop that in the chat. I'm trying to see how I can be more supportive outside of these nightly calls. Um, so if any of you would be interested in some coaching with someone on my coaching staff, let me know. I want to see if that, is, would, that would be of value. Stomach is hurting 24 hours nonstop. I don't know what to do about that, Shazia. Um, get more sleep. Excellent, Robin. I was told liver en enzymes are elevated. I don't drink. What can I do? Uh, great question. I would see a functional medicine doctor, mush love, and ask them. Why no multivitamin? Uh, because they often have too much copper and too much iron and not enough zinc, and not enough magnesium. Can you advise on psoriasis? Um, can you say more about that, please? Red wine, one a day. If you're gonna drink, red wine is best, ideally organic. Um, also, the red wine has antioxidants. After that, uh, liquor would be better. Uh, beer is kind of the worst because it, it increases uric acid, which increases, which beer also has gluten. So you wanna do that. Jason's interested in coaching, excellent. So is more so, great. Black Widow, yes. Bcat, yes to coaching. Instagram is basically everything I teach. Why, thank you, Beth. I hope you're sharing this with others. Blue Power is interested. Florida Cat Mom, absolutely. Great, so over the next week or so, I'm gonna figure out how we can do this because I wanna make this more uh, available because um, I, I really want you to have the support to help continue these healthy lifestyle choices. I'm gonna keep doing these live events at night. I think these are really fun. These are one of my favorite things. And so um, I just love it. And I wanna make sure that you have the support you need to make sure you're continuing on doing what's most helpful to you. No more sardines. No, don't say that. Who said that? How could you say that? What do I eat for breakfast? I don't eat breakfast, but I do break my fast. And so I usually break my fast with a smoothie between noon and 4 p.m. Cindy, or... Cindy, yes to coaching, great. Clean teeth, yes to coaching. User 1707, yes to coaching. I have Kaiser will not refer to a functional medicine doctor, got issues after vaccination, after vax. Uh, I, I, oh, oh, I have a great resource if you're interested in long haul virus. Uh, it is under my profile, it's called Back to 100. It's a free masterclass with Dr. Linnell King. He's a really handsome doctor from uh, Johns Hopkins. Handsome doesn't make him qualified. He just is. I like to say that about him. Check out his masterclass. It's free. It's really good. Um, if you're interested in long haul virus, speed up. Thank you, Robert. You are so welcome. Okay. A lot of people are interested in coaching over 10, um, probably more like 20. And so I'll find it. I'll find a way to, to make this uh, available so it can be of, ser of service to you. Thank you. You're brilliant. Why? Thank you so much. Um, so I have a friend coming over and we're about to eat some chocolate and discuss, um, and discuss some things. So I'm going to get going. Uh, I'm scrolling through your, I love you. I love you too, username. I appreciate that. Summer sucks. What's the best toothpaste? I use, um, I use Tom's fluoride free. Am I against vaccines? No, I'm not. I'm against mandatory vaccines. I'm against mandatory just about everything. Um, I don't think the government is smart enough to tell us what to do with our lives. Certainly if you can read and are informed. Um, I think uh, vaccines have been great. Polio, the polio vaccine has been really effective. Uh, and that's what I will say about vaccines. Can antidepressants cause Alzheimer's disease? I haven't seen that research. Depression is linked to Alzheimer's disease. Just became a top three viewer. Good for you. Is Saul good for you? Cool. Funky Skittles. Are hand tremors a sign of Alzheimer's disease? I don't know, I don't think so, but hand tremors, ideally get those investigated. Go to a neurologist, see what's going on there. By the way, there are, um, I'm working with a client right now, he has, uh, he has tremors and he's taking a medicine that decreases norepinephrine. Norepinephrine 
uh, is it's involved in emotional memory. And so if this basically blocks emotional memories, so he's had memory issues. And so I'm working with his a neurologist to find a medication that is not, um, does not mess with his norepinephrine so he can have a better memory. So, um, so I highly remember, uh, so I highly suggest if you are taking a uh, medication that uh, works with neurotransmitters, if you're taking a psycho- something that affects your psyche, affects how you think, how you feel, it might affect neurotransmitters, search what neurotransmitters it's working on and see if those affect memory. If you're experiencing memory loss, I think it's really important. Okay. Full list of supplements to support brain and gut health and coaching. Okay, user 101. Um, the full list of supplements, I'm working on that on the book. It's a little daunting. It's so many darn things. And I want you to take action. So if you do one thing, I'd want you to exercise. If you do two, I want you to exercise and get sunlight in the morning. If you were to do three, it'd be exercise, sunlight in the morning, and sleep. If you were to do four, it'd be that plus enough water. If you were to do, you were to do five, it might be uh, curcumin or... Um, I might, you know, it would be eat healthy food and then it would be supplements. Um, so I don't want, I don't want to overstress supplements. Supplements are just my favorite way of helping people because it's so, um, so powerful. It's easy. It's relatively inexpensive. I mean, the amount of nutrition you get from a supplement is so great. Um, and so I really recommend getting your, getting your stuff in, um, getting your exercise and sleep, getting sunlight in the morning. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, oh, put would you, would you put in your favorite, um, Podcasts in the bottom. I'd love to see what podcasts are your absolute favorites. Um, I like uh, I like the Lewis Howes podcast. I like the um, the 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 impact theory or the health impact with um, Ryan Billu, and then I like the uh, David Sinclair podcast on longevity and the Huberman podcast. Those are my favorite. Please let me know what your favorite um, podcasts are, where you're learning your neuroscience, your brain healthy stuff. Love to know what you're watching, listening. Dave Asprey, I, lo- I love Dave Asprey. He, do you recommend taking meds for ADHD? It depends on how old you are. I'd recommend starting with exercise and sleep. Do you listen to Max Lugavere? Sometimes I like him and I've gotten to meet him uh, online on an interview. He's a really nice person. He's really great. Any other great podcasts? Dr. Fungus podcasts. Oh, interesting. Is sleep apnea connected to Alzheimer's? A uh, yes, in that bad sleep is connected with Alzheimer's. Ways to promote to to reduce sleep apnea: lose weight, and then I t- I put tape over my mouth. That increases nose breathing. That could help as well. Please work with a specialist, ideally a functional medicine doctor, who says, "Listen, you got to lose weight. If you have sleep apnea, you likely need to lose weight." Uh, people who lose ten percent of their body weight, it reduces the risk of atrial fibrillation as well as sleep apnea. So I recommend um, doing that. Any other videos on fasting? I recently put one out today that goes pretty in depth. It was long for TikTok. It was like six minutes. I was surprised so many people watched it. Um, so I would I th- that's that's my best stuff on fasting. The Truth Podcast with Drew Linetta. Let me take a picture of that. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, this has been just wonderful. I so appreciate all of these. Um, Simon Hill, The Proof Podcast. Let me take a picture of that. Great. I so appreciate all of you. Thank you for sending your Friday night here with me. Oh, I love Mark Hyman. Mark Hyman's great. Oh, hey, who remembers um, TGIF with Steve Urkel? Family Matters. Remember that? Put, that? put that in the chat. Blow up the chat if you remember Family Matters with Steve Urkel. That was my favorite thing to do for, um, for Friday night when I was a kid. I just loved Family Matters. I thought he was so funny. I thought it was a great... Yes, Robin, yes. I got all these yeses. Fantastic. I loved Family Matters. I liked TGIF. There was Step by Step. Those are the two ones that I remember the best. But that was just that was just great. And so I appreciate that I can be with you now on Friday night sharing this fun stuff with you. I, I, I think this is fun. I really enjoy speaking with you. I love answering your questions. I hope I'm helpful. I love hearing the actions that you're taking. I love it so, so much. How old are you? I am 40. Um, yes to Family Matters. Awesome. I give up. Pete Boy, why are you giving up? Don't give up. Keep going. Persistence. Persistence is how you get it. Um, do I believe in reincarnation? I don't know. General George S. Patton did. I definitely believe that this life is, there's more to this life than my physical body. I definitely believe there's something much bigger out there. Um, what university do I teach at? I don't teach at any university, but I'm thinking about doing the Harvard challenge. I want to go to professors at schools, uh, and say, look, I will teach the content of your course. We'll do a test 
after uh, we'll do a we'll do a s- test where you teach half the class, I'll teach half the class. We'll see who remembers more at the end. I think I I think so. I use cutting edge memory techniques like review, um, like changing your body posture. Some of the things Tony Robbins does. So, so I plan on going to universities and say, look, I'll teach your subject better than you, um, and I'll show it, I'll show it to you. Um, by testing their students. I didn't say that very well, but basically I'm, I want to go in and teach their class for them and prove that my teaching style is better and get universities to change the way that they teach because they teach in the standard lecture. Uh, you know, if you ask university professors or any teacher, what, you know, why do you teach? They'll say, because I want to get this content out there. It's not so the students learn, or the students have a better life. I would approach it and say, listen, I'm sh- what I'm sharing with you today, I want you to remember it and I want you to use it. And I say in a way to make it valuable to you. I hope that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to have you review. If, I, if we were in a classroom together, I'd have us stand up and cheer and chant and you talk with each other and you'd say, hey, here, I'm, I'm going to fast. What are you going to do? I'm going to eat sardines. Great. High five. Write it down. Put that in your calendar to go buy sardines and put in your calendar to not eat and, and, do, and do that. So uh, I plan on teaching at some universities to kind of compete with the professors. I don't know if they'll play. I hope so. But that'd be fun. It'd be fun to say, listen, I'm going to go into you know, this school, I'm, I'm going to go to Harvard and talk to this professor, ask if I can teach their course and then film it on TikTok and then get, you know, a couple thousand views or 10,000 views. And then the professor will be like, all right, fine, I'll let you do it. All right. That's all I got for you today. Tony Robbins is awesome. I agree. How to know if I got ADHD. Uh, basically, you get tested. Um, a, a psychologist or a, a neuropsychologist can help you. All right. Thank you so much for being here. TGIF. It was great being with you. Roxy, I'm a narcissist. Roxy, have you been here the whole time? Have you really been here? Blessings to you. I really, I really want the best for you. I find it interesting that you choose to spend your time with us here. And you know, we want the best for you. And so if you're here, I hope you learned something. And, and, and I, I, I wish you the best. God bless you. I love you all. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful weekend. I may be on tomorrow. I may not be. Uh, go, go horns in the football game tomorrow. Eat your sardines. And uh, I will see you Monday or Tuesday. I'll let you know. I'll put a little, um, I'll put a video together that says, uh, send what the next one is. Probably Monday night because I will miss you too much. So have a wonderful weekend. Talk to you soon. I'm just going to stay on and read a few more comments. What time do I hop on? Usually 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Mountain. Sorry. Bye-bye.